in, in 1980, um, I was a graduate student coming out of Wichita State, an MBA, took all the real estate classes they had and sent out my resume to the real estate community. And I interviewed with a gentleman by the name of Alex Dean, who was vice president with uh, Builders. And he said he'd like to hire me, but first I had to interview with uh, Willard Garvey. And when I was 26 years old, Willard Garvey was an icon in Wichita and one of these names that I couldn't believe I was gonna sit down with Willard Garvey and, and uh, interview for a job. And so I went to the 10th floor of the R.H. Garvey building and, uh, it, and he was out of town for a couple weeks, so that was a nervous two weeks for me. And I went up there to the 10th floor and uh, I think that's where uh, Corey Harkle Road uh, office currently is located. And I sat down and he interviewed me and he was uh, extremely nice to me. He hired me and he said, I think we're gonna hire you. And I said, well, when do I start? He says, well, I don't know. So he turned around, got on the phone, called Alex Dean. He said, and then he turned around, he said, eight o'clock tomorrow morning. And that's how I started my real estate career. And so it's a real honor for me to uh, introduce Mike Garvey, president of Builders, who's a fourth generation uh, Garvey to work in the real estate community in Wichita and he will introduce our speaker today. So, thank you. Merry Christmas. One thing we learn about in CCIM is the time value of money. And so I wanted to share a few anecdotes about what that means. In 1949, my grandfather built 33 fourplexes, or 132 units, that we still own for $375,000. Today, that would cost $20 million. We rented houses in the 1940s for $45 a month. In 1955, one-bedroom apartments rented for $59 a month, and a two-bedroom house was $8,000. I'm gonna introduce our speaker today by taking you through the time our family has spent on real estate in Wichita. And I ask you to think about how you spend your time, or instead of time value of money, the time value of time. What is your time worth to you? 130 years ago in 1893, Ray Hugh Garvey was born in Phillipsburg, Kansas, and in 1959, he passed away in a car accident. During his 66 years on this earth, he farmed, built, and created many business opportunities using his unique gift as an entrepreneur and risk taker. This is how he spent his time, working on his business and creating strong ties to his family. When he died, that development was in danger because of the mountain of debt needed to put everything in place. It fell to his wife, Olive, and four children, including Willard Garvey, who had co-signed all the loans to work their way free from this burden. The company was never going to stay together because of the personalities involved. So the family agreed to divide the company into equal parts. Olive Garvey decided to spend her time mending fences between her children and keeping the family together instead of working on growing the business. Willard Garvey took his piece of the company and built many developments around Wichita, including Garvey Center, Epic Center, helped with the Big Ditch, Wichita Grain Elevators, Southwest Industrial Park, 5,000 single family homes, and apartments, among other developments. He too had a developer's mentality, ultimately using his time trying to change the world. Internationally, he built single family homes all over the world and started an island country called Minerva with John Templeton. In the 1980s, Willard decided that Wichita needed two 300,000 square foot office buildings rising 22 stories with an attached hotel. The first office building, Epic Center, was built for $28 million. The tax code at that time allowed for double depreciation and buildings all around the country were going up for that reason. When the tax code changed, the incentive to build the rest of the projects evaporated. Willard had a developer's mindset and was able to weather the successes and misfortunes of the real estate market well. 
In 1992, the family decided to again split the company into equal parts, and Jim Garvey took Builders Incorporated and worked diligently to once again pay off the debt that the company had hanging over it from the construction of Epic Center. His motto has always been, take care of what you got. I always thought this was a reference to the parable of the talents from the Bible, which not only means take care of what is given, but don't waste your gifts. Jim certainly hasn't wasted his gifts, which is his generous heart and love for others. Jim rehabilitated many of the apartments built by Willard, donated ground for the South Branch YMCA, as well as donating the Salvation Army's Biddy Basketball Building, which is now another YMCA facility. Jim spent his time supporting other people to be successful. I came back to run a debt-free Builders Inc. in 2007, and we've built a few apartments, but I use my time supporting our team who makes wise decisions, ultimately deciding that this responsibility can't be a burden. Is my family four generations old or 100? Builders Incorporated is smaller than the original company in 1959, but it's still together after four generations. We can also trace our roots back to when it was nothing, just a teenager renting farm ground to go to college. Nick Bonavia, my cousin, has now invested heavily in Wichita real estate and has a desire for this city to thrive. My second cousin, Donna Koshiner, and their company, Koshiner Garvey Capital Partners, has purchased the Hotel Old Town and moved their software development company into the downtown core. There are many other family members that have a vested interest in Wichita, and that brings us to today. 130 years, four generations, over 120 living descendants of Ray Hugh have benefited from his vision. So what you do with your time is completely up to you. Just don't waste your talent. And now, Jim Garvey. Well, uh, well done, Michael. Thank you. Uh, I, I would have loved to have him give the regular presentation, but he did a great job. Uh, an overview, I'll just try to elaborate a little bit. Apologize for the sandals, I have a leg issue, so apologize for a bit. Anyway, um, well, some of this may repeat some of the things Michael said, but uh, you're honoring Dad and the Garvey family, uh, Dad being Willard, and uh, but it did really begin with his dad. Uh, and uh, as Michael mentioned, he was literally born in the side of a hill there in northern Kansas near Phillipsburg. Uh, his dad and grandfather had homesteaded up there. He uh, ran everywhere across the fields and worked his way through Washburn University, earning a law degree. I think at some point he had a two-mile record, too, following up on his running. I met his wife there, my grandmother. They married in uh, 1915 or so. They uh, moved to Colby, Kansas, and uh, he opened his law practice, renting a desk in a land office building. He eventually got into uh, land through acquisitions, et cetera, and uh, farmed it and uh, kept expanding on that business. Eventually, I think having over 100,000 acres of farmland in western Kansas, eastern Colorado. <clears throat> uh, it was rough going through the Dust Bowl for in farming out there, and uh, he kept with it. The family had moved to Wichita in 1927. Grandmother wanted her kids to grow up in a larger town, but grandfather corresponded daily pretty much over many, many years with his farm manager as well as visiting out in Colby to oversee the operations. His farm manager didn't have a telephone and so they wrote letters every day back and forth. So it was rough uh, trying to grow crops in the Dust Bowl, but they kept working at it and finally 
after the war it had a bumper crop and they needed more storage and the rest of the country needed more grain storage. So he provided uh, a supply for that by building large terminal elevators the, the, uh, throughout the plain, Great Plains. Uh, and the largest in the world actually is here in Wichita, south of town, that they built. And Dad was involved on that too. Uh, dad uh, grew up, he was a swimmer, his dad had run, he swam his entire life, he was an important part of his life almost every day. Uh, was in the war in uh, Lon London uh, headquarter area, uh, World War II, and when he came home he wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do. He had an interest in journalism, among other things. Uh, grandfather said, well why don't you take Drake and build some houses? And Clarence Drake was a uh, construction superintendent that grandfather had. He had built some uh, small, very affordable homes west of Wichita State in the 30s. And they were people, they were small, what people could afford, but as they earned more money, they could expand upon these homes. He also built about 84 brick fourplexes on South Hydraulic in the early 40s. So dad took Drake and built some houses, as Michael said. Uh, the flyer mentioned they were cottages, but they were houses, all brick, typically all brick, uh, uh, starter homes, basically, with basements. Uh, southwest part of town had a shallow water table, so they brought, brought the basements out of ground and built by-levels, a lot of them. He, uh, so they built about 5,000 of those, uh, 1,600 or so apartments. Typically everything was all brick. And Park Lane Shopping Center in the mid-50s, which is uh, the first large shopping center in Wichita, and a lot of the downtown merchants had stores there, model, Lewins, uh, Hinkles, etc. In 56 or 57, Boeing shut down production apparently laid off a lot of workers. Construction in Wichita really came to a halt. Dad had a lot of subdivisions platted and things, and they, that didn't come to fruition. Uh, so he turned his attention overseas, as Michael mentioned, uh, to build affordable housing uh, overseas. And uh, as a young man, I was kind of inspired. Uh, his best project was in Peru. And originally the homes were uh, pretty much all the same. They're very basic concrete block homes, but it was better than what the people had moved from. It was a real step up for these people. But they pretty much looked all the same, but after a while they're all different. People, different colors, different landscaping, maybe a second floor added. So it showed what the pride of home ownership did. And dad's motto was every man a homeowner and his philosophy was uh, communism was a big threat at the time. Uh, if, if a man owned a home, communism had nothing to offer him because they didn't believe in private property. <clears throat> After grandfather passed in 1959, uh, he, had, he was a passenger in a car returning from Salina near, McF he was sleeping and uh, a semi turned and, and uh, hit his side of the car, so he, he never woke up. But uh, they had just paid off a mortgage of the Saline elevator, I believe. After he passed, the family, uh, were, they were all in business together, grandmother and the four kids. And uh, uh, Bob Page had been hired by grandmother. He had worked with grandfather before his passing. He, she hired him afterwards, but he observed that uh, the meetings were very contentious. Everyone felt they knew how to run things, and uh, the conclusion was break up the family or break up the business. They decided to break up the business, and he engineered a five-year tax-free spin-out, and uh, so dad took builders, he took the oil company, Petroleum Inc., a uh, mortgage banking company, Amorta Bank, and his portion of the grain business, 
and uh, which included the elevator terminal south of town and some country elevators nearby. They were doing pretty well in the grain business, and so in the early 60s, he acquired a, uh, they were contiguous ranches in northwest Nevada. Uh, it was really the Wild West out there, but it was real adventure going out there. Uh, then in the mid-60s, the family built Garvey Center. Uh, Dad was the only sibling living in Wichita, so he was pretty involved in it. His, a longtime friend of his, Sid Platt, was the architect. Uh, Bob Page uh, managed it for the family. Early 60s, Dad did get into the newspaper business, Wichita World, Washington World. Uh, he felt that newspapers generally covered too much uh, negative news and too much government news, so his papers tried to emphasize more positive news and private sector news. <clears throat> Throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even in the 90s, he continued to build apartments here in Wichita, eventually building over 2,800 uh, around the city. <clears throat> in the mid-80s, uh, they developed uh, Epic Center downtown, <clears throat> and uh, I was not, at that time, involved in the day-to-day -day operations of builders, but uh, was at the board meeting when they were deciding whether to go ahead and build Epic Center or not. Bob Page, managing Garvey Center, said he he had no problem competing with them. He could rent at $10 a foot and make money, and he knew Epic would have to charge more than that. There was a discussion about uh, the office market maybe wasn't all that great at the time. Epic was about 300,000 square feet of office, and a uh, little discussion that it, it could take builders under. Uh, they could, it could uh, overwhelm builders. After the meeting, I visited with Dad in, in his office and just expressing my concerns about possibly losing builders. He said, well, Jim, uh, I may regret building Epic Center, but it, or, or I may, yeah, let's see, I may regret building Epic Center, but I'll, I'll really regret not building it. He, he loved to build. He, he just loved to build. So it was built, uh, builders did survive. Uh, adding to that story though, uh, he said, you know, when I think he's referring to builders, when we started, we really didn't have anything. They, builders didn't have much, hardly anything. When we started, we really didn't have anything. And if I go back to that, I'm okay with that. So it really gave me an insight in his perception of things as an entrepreneur and a risk taker. You know, he wasn't gonna make foolish risks, but he had built it up from nothing and he was willing, if he had to go back to that, uh, to go back there. And uh, later in the 90s, uh, he had uh, acquired the rest of Garvey Center from family members and uh, the Holiday Inn was built in the middle of the center by the Leitners in, in the early 70s. They had subsequently sold it to other people and it eventually lost its Holiday Inn franchisee but was operating as ho different hotels. Uh, they defaulted on the land lease and uh, builders got the property, 27 story, 26 or 27 story building in the middle of Garvey Center hired Larry Weber later in the 90s. He had, Larry had worked in a hotel business for many years to help him figure out what to do with the property. I think it was, they had vacated the property at the time and they looked at lots of options, including imploding it. And uh, uh, being a hotel was just too expensive. Dad wasn't willing to do that. And so they came up with the idea of apartments. And there really weren't apartments in downtown Wichita at that time. This was in the 90s. And uh, so, uh, you know, they weren't sure if it would take. So uh, Dad was willing to uh, 
just to open the building costs two million dollars or so to get the utilities going again, et cetera, and elevators, and and uh, so they, they decide, well, we'll do one floor of apartments at a time, and you know, if they rent, we'll keep going, and uh, you could do, get eight apartments on a floor. So they started near the top and worked their way down. If they ran it up, so they kept kept adding on. When he passed in 2002, it wasn't quite finished. And, Mom got the property, and we stepped in to help her and finished it, made a few changes. But uh, uh, it just he was 77, 78 at the time and willing to start a new business venture and take the risk. <clears throat> he also built a, a number of things for nonprofit organizations. I think it was the late 40s maybe or maybe early 50s. Logopedics was raising money to start a new campus. He said, well, I don't know that I'll give you money, but I'll build it for you. So he, uh, at no cost to them, built, oh, there were 100 or so brick fourplexes and triplexes. And, uh, and then the main administration classroom building, I think it had a gymnasium in it. And he uh, built it at no cost to them and had a low interest loan. They just took over and started making payments on <laughs> Uh, Mom started the independent school. They outgrew a small nursing home. So in their front field, 20-acre field, they, they built uh, the lower school. Uh, they originally just went up to sixth grade, later added a grade a year to get through high school, and he kept building. Uh, uh, Fred, grandmother was a longtime Quaker uh, background and uh, involved at Friends University. In the early 70s, they built uh, the gymnasium there at Friends. Uh, anyway, he was well known as an advocate for fighting government growth, and we kind of continued that a little with our Kansas Taxpayers Network, trying to represent the taxpayer up in Topeka and here in Wichita. We had done uh, pie charts when I was involved with builders uh, showing our total taxes payroll, sales, income, property. As you commercial property owners know that. That's a big hit. And we were doing well, but uh, we paid as much in taxes as we took home. So we we're working till July for the government and don't really, didn't want to really have it keep going to August, September, October for the government eventually. So we can run our businesses and do a great job doing it, but there's, may, there's this large snowball coming down the hill and growing behind it. It's called government spending, taxes, regulations. And it can overwhelm us, even though we're doing a great job running our business. So we try to keep it at bay, keep it in line. There's a need for government, but keep it uh, somewhat limited and, and uh, so we can grow. I got involved in builders. I'd grown up uh, working in maintenance and yard crews and uh, building houses, managed Park Lane for a while. Uh, but uh, in the late 70s, I was managing a business for my brothers and sisters and myself. And uh, we had uh, 216 apartments. And I was at a board meeting. and. We were doing about as well as builders' apartments. Uh, they had 10 times the number we did. Uh, I mean, they are maybe, I don't remember the numbers, but earning not much, you know, maybe twice what we were, but they had 10 times the number of units. And uh, I just said, well, I don't know what's going on, but if you want me to try to help, I'll be glad to. So they hired me in January of 80. and. Uh, we just instituted common sense things, uh, things we had done at our properties. We multiplied by the 10 or 11 properties builders had, and a one right system. And we knew if people had paid fairly early in the month, builders had a mainframe computer, and they didn't know if people had paid till later in the month. Uh, made a lot of personnel changes, just common sense purchase order controls. Uh, so it got turned around and was a good cash generator for builders and enabled them to do a lot of their development in the 80s, including Epic Center. 
a uh, little bit after that, they asked me to get involved in the commercial properties also. Uh, the person there had stepped aside. And we didn't have a lot. Park Lane was our main property. It was pretty empty, a lot of vacancies. And uh, uh, so at the time they hired me, they had run an ad in the Wall Street Journal, and I interviewed a couple applicants for leasing, and we hired a gentleman who had a turnaround of a uh, large shopping center in Buffalo, New York, Fred Earhart, and uh, he joined us and was enthusiastic. And Dad had certain parameters on leases, and being his son, I think he maybe eased back a little bit. We, we didn't take advantage of it that much, but uh, were able to maybe do some things other people maybe hadn't been able to. But uh, got it turned around, got it going. Dennis Fitzroy, a lot of you know, has done a great job with Park Lane and other properties and uh, also since then. Uh, we It was all retail. It's 300,000 square feet. Uh, half faces Oliver, half faces Glendale. So we made the Glendale side uh, office at that time. and. So it's still a, a good business for us. In uh, the early 90s, as Michael mentioned, we also uh, we were at a family business meeting and it became apparent it was probably better we not be in business together, certain family issues. And uh, so Bob Page, again, engineered a five-year tax-free spin-out of the business his dad had. And uh, I took builders, my brother took uh, petroleum ink, uh, one sister took the grain business, another sister took the ranch, and two sisters were bought out. Uh, we had all been working in those businesses anyway. So uh, what was great about it was uh, eight people involved, my mom and dad and six kids, everyone was happy. Pretty good deal. Uh, in the uh, early 90s, we, uh, decided to rehab about 400 apartment units over a few years uh, for low income uh, and getting some tax credits for that. So we're totally going to gut them. Instead of floor furnaces and window air conditioners, have central heat and air and new windows, new doors, new floors, new cabinets, new everything. So it's a total rehab of these apartments. And at the time, I asked our construction gentleman, Larry Shoemaker, uh, well, these have been here 40 years. If we rehab them, will they be here another 40? And he said, yes. Well, we still have them. It shows the, the benefit of building something well in the first place. You have to take care of it over the years. We spent a lot of money remodeling over the years, but it was well built originally, and so 70 years later, it's still a worthwhile business for us. Park Lane also, it's... Uh, about, we're 70 years old, so it's still doing a good job for us. Okay, on to Michael. Um, I have three sons and kind of had left the door open if any of them wanted to get involved with the business. They had grown up school years, uh, doing some work, you know, maintenance or construction. And uh, Michael was in Los Angeles, this was about 2007, running his own business. It was not real estate or even real estate related, but uh, doing a good job, risking his own money, expressed an interest coming back and running builders. And uh, he was the same age I was when I took on the apartments, about 30. So. We had some good people there at Builders. I felt they could be good mentors. And so he came back and it was, we had a consultant who helped us on the transition, had our ground rules. And, and uh, I stepped off the board, was one of them. And, and uh, uh, so it was tough originally, but uh, uh, it's worked out well. Michael has done a great job and has enjoyed it. <clears throat> He's, uh, continue to do uh, great things managing. He started managing for other people, which we hadn't been doing. And he also did a good job from their earnings. He's diversified into real estate related businesses like roofing and heating and air 
uh, apartment or residential and commercial remodeling, and those contributed nicely to a builder's cash flow. <clears throat> I think grandfather and dad, and I think for me and Michael also, uh, they just liked the challenge of business. I, I don't know that they're necessarily trying to acquire more and get wealthier, but they just liked the daily challenge. And grandfather said, the fortunate thing about business is it requires the constant attention of management. <clears throat> so Michael referred to the parable of the talents. It was kind of a guiding principle for me, just thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many. Take care of what you got, as he said. Um, and uh, it, it refers, in the Bible, it's, the term is talents, referring to money, but you can use it also, obviously, for the other use of the word, your, your skills. Be faithful over. And I think in each generation, grandfather was diligent and focused on the farming through many, many years of drought, and then finally had bumper crops and decided to help store in the storage area and, and uh, by but by paying attention being faithful over his farming he became ruler over other things dad loved building uh, sold the homes kept the apartments and commercial properties and grew his business that way i was more management oriented so focused on uh, 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 the operations of the apartments and then the commercial properties and our revenues enabled us to grow. Michael did more of that and also uh, expanded into other businesses. <clears throat> our name is associated with builders and many of these other businesses, but uh, I'll tell you, I wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the wonderful people that have been working with us. Uh, Dad, grandfather's generation, dad's, mine, Michael's. Uh, Harvey Childers is here today. He worked with dad uh, 37 years in many very important roles. Brad Smizer with Builders uh, started as a controller, has been our executive vice president and controller. He's been with us a little over 41 years. Larry Shoemaker, our construction manager, has been with us a little over almost 43 years. Uh, these are the people that are here. <laughs> I can, and uh, 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 let's see, Sam LaHolt uh, with Apartments, been with us over 24 years. Larry Weber, who dad hired for Garvey Center, uh, has been with us a little over 25 years. Um, I have others, I know, uh, assistant controller, I think 40 years this year, and, and uh, uh, others, administrative assistant, 37 years, and others similar length as Den Dennis Fitzroy, I think I forgot, uh, 36 years, uh, and some other people similar length as him. So um, we've been really blessed and fortunate to have uh, really good people to work with, and uh, that's the only reason we're here. And. Uh, Anyway, if any of you want to read a little bit more about Dad, uh, uh, a gal uh, was working on the newspaper out in the Winnemucca, Nevada, and met him, and met my sister living out there, became a good friend of the family, and after Dad passed, Mom commissioned her to write a book about him, and she'd been on a Pulitzer Prize awarding team at a newspaper in Ohio. So it's a well-researched, well-written, interesting book about Dad called Willard Garvey, An Epic Life. And you can buy it on Amazon. It's an e-book, too, if you want. Thank you all for listening. Well, we now have come to the point in the program where we officially bestow the award
And as we said when we began, one, one of the guidelines that we have with the Kansas CCIM chapter and WSU Center for Real Estate Lifetime Achievement Award is that posthumous awards are only given in clearly exceptional cases. And this is clearly an exceptional case. Um, as, as Jim and, and Mike mentioned, you know, the legacy dates back to uh, Ray Garvey and to small farm in northern Kansas. And so as we make this award, we would like to invite up all of the living descendants of Ray Garvey to come to receive the award together. And if you could just gather here around the award, the award itself is a piece of original Karg art glass. Please come on up, come on up, come on up. All of you come. It is a piece of original, um, it's a Kans piece of Kansas art that is original for a Kansas original family. So are there others to join or is this, this where we're gonna be? Okay. Well then, um, Jim, John, Annie. Yeah, come on, we'll, we'll see you behind it. We'll see you behind it there. <laughs> Annie. It is my great privilege to award to Willard Garvey and the entire Garvey family the Kansas CCIM chapter and WSU Center for Real Estate Lifetime Achievement Award in recognition of several lifetimes of outstanding contribution to the Wichita commercial real estate community. <laughs> 